The problem I'm having with the currently installed aftermarket kit is basically it's detecting everything imaginable. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. A uh, quick update on the Chevy. That is uh, just waiting on the parts. The they should definitely be here by this afternoon, they've been guaranteed, so I will get on with that tomorrow and uh, so look out for a video in a week or so for that. Uh, anyway, a uh, quick project here, this is my old Ford wagon, it's uh, 2005, uh, diesel, blah blah blah, uh, basically it's got an aftermarket uh, reversing sensors on it, which they just suck, I mean they just really do not work well at all, so uh, just while the sun's shining and uh, got a bit of spare time, uh, picked the kit up off Amazon, which I'll stick a link in the description for, and uh, just going to put this on here today. So let's get to it. The problem I'm having with the currently installed aftermarket kit is basically it's detecting everything imaginable. So when you put it into reverse, it is detecting something behind and there's nothing there basically. Furthermore, I don't know if you can see this very well on camera, but the little LEDs which are there to give you an idea of how close you are to things on either side, they're just not working. So I'm going to pull this out and put in this other kit that I found on Amazon. Actually this car does also have a reversing camera and I think that's what this additional wiring is for, I'll, but uh, before I put it back together I will tidy that up a little. Yeah, I think it does need a little tidying.
Um, I don't know if you can see, but there is actually an up, an up and a down to these. If I remember correctly, uh, let's see. I'll have to double check on this, but I believe they go in that way with this lip facing down. Well, unfortunately, as I feared, it would appear that these are actually detecting the ground. So I think it's going to be a matter of drilling new holes, which I didn't really want to do, but I don't think I've got much choice. Oh, oh well. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of the better quality a lot of the better quality reversing kits 16 inches or at least 14 is what i would say is a minimum they need to be from the ground because if not then you're going to run into this problem where they do appear to be just detecting i mean this gravel is only about an inch higher than the uh, driveway and it's detecting the gravel so well, that's made for a lot more work, but that's how it goes. Anyway, I'm going to stop the video now. Uh, I'm going to figure out how to install these in this rear bumper, and then I will come back to you shortly. So, a little bit of investigation. Uh, there is a metal bumper behind the actual uh, cover here. However, there is enough space to be able to mount the sensor in there without any issues. Now, uh, what I will do is, I'm not using these locations uh, as a reference. I am actually going to take my own measurements. Uh, I think... Could be mistaken but i think this one is actually out so that is why i want to measure these myself now easy way to do this if you have a tow bar fitted then it's obviously this is in the center line of the vehicle if not just look at the the trunk mount uh, the actual latch again that will in most instances be in the central line of the vehicle so it's just a matter of just taking the measurements from there uh, it is a bit daunting at times cutting into a perfectly good bumper, but 
that is the nature of it. Uh, again, what I'll probably do is, um, uh, well, what I'll do is I'll use the old sensors just to fill these, these gaps for now. I may come back at some point and uh, fiberglass these in and uh, then repaint the bumper. But for now, this is just a installation. I'm not going to get into that. Okay, so first things first, let's measure where we are going to place the first, first sensor. I think what I will do is, let's see, yeah, that one there, I may just use that as a reference point. So, what we want to do is, I'm going to put that there and basically eye up the centre of it. Then I will let's just see if I can stay, get my hand out of the camera. And put my tape. And take the measurement from there to the center of the of the trunk latch and it is that is precisely 10 inches there so I want to mount it approximately there I'm going for 18 inches. So I'm going for 18 inches approximately. Let's see if I get there. So, I'll first mark right there. What I will do is, I will move the car onto flatter ground for the one that is over here. Then I will take a measurement from the ground up, just to ensure that I get the centres of them uh, correct. So, Number one. Number two. Well, that's everything roughly in place. Uh, I haven't routed the cables into the car yet. Uh, fingers crossed this location will work. It may actually detect the camera, so... So, let's just throw it into reverse and try it. So, I'm not sure if you can see on the screen, but two central ones are definitely detecting the camera. So, 
now it does seem to be working better uh, I think at this point what I'm going to have to do is just uh, throw all the cables in uh, the one on the right hand side is actually detecting there are some decorative rocks over there which I think it's picking up but overall it is an improvement uh, we are quite close to the back of the car at the moment so it is picking me up, it's picking the camera up, it's picking stuff that's laying around so it too. So at this point I think what I'm going to do is just route all the cables and move the car out onto the street uh, and try it out there. Well, here we go. Right, so at this point I do have all the cables routed approximately where I want them to go. Uh, there is already a harness running behind here, so under this panel, so I've just uh, used that as a basic routing method. At the moment, I am not... This still has to be mounted in here somewhere, however I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, the one thing I want to do next is I actually want to uh, fit the uh, screen up into the uh, driving position so that I can then route the cable through because past experience uh, sometimes you do have to mess about with this just because of cable lengths etc. So I have uh, removed the old one, the old uh, screen and I have run into a small issue something that I hadn't really anticipated uh, the actual screen on this one is a lot larger and fitting it where the old one was located basically covers up you know, a significant portion of the dashboard from the from where I'm sitting in the driver's seat uh, you can't see the 30 mile per hour uh, you can't see the 30 mile per hour uh, marking on the speedo so yeah that's technically that's illegal in the UK and uh, plus the simple fact is we've got a lot of speed cameras around here so it is worthwhile being able to know what you're doing 30. Therefore I have I'm thinking it may be viable to actually maybe just mount it there it's not an ideal location because uh, quite frankly I don't like anything being obvious. Okay welcome back guys. Now I've been playing around with the location of this because I just did not like the idea of putting it on that side. So I don't know if you can see this but I found a means of mounting it so that it uh, still got access to the speedometer, all the gauges, the uh, idiot lights etc. And I think this is going to work. Uh, it's going off at the moment because uh, there's a bush behind me blowing around so it's keep uh, detecting that but uh, yeah I think this is going to be the, a better location. Uh, so what I did was uh, I just uh, dropped the tilt steering down and it, it's not actually stuck down at the moment but uh, there is a piece of plastic trim behind there that it should stick to nicely and I think that is going to work. Okay so that's it installed. It sits quite nicely there. Oh shut up. So let's try it. I'm actually trying to get up close to something. So let's just see how close we are to the actual pot that's behind the car.
Well, as you can see, that's pretty good that. Uh, I am literally just a few inches away. One thing I will have to pay attention to is the tow bar. I uh, have to take that into uh, account. But uh, yeah, first test overall, I'm uh, rather happy with this. Nice little set. I will, uh, I will of course link it in the description. It's a generic brand, so there is no name attached to it. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, build quality. It's better than the, the one that was installed. Uh, about average for what I've seen out there. Uh, I, at the time of actually ordering this, it was 20. 23.95 uh, British pounds, which is around $28. Uh, for that price, yeah, I'm happy with it. Uh, the actual little screen itself isn't bad. It's, uh, it's. I mean, you, 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 if when you touch it, you can tell it's a, it's a cheap uh, unit. But again, it looks okay. You know, it's not. You know, nobody's going to be uh, touching it. So. Uh, one little feature which I will uh, demonstrate as well, which is quite a nice feature. You do actually, you are able to mute it. Oh. You're able to mute it there. Or you can change the volume. I'll just leave it on 7. So, yeah, overall, very happy with it. Well, guys, that's the project complete. Uh, like I say, it was just a quick one, this. Anyway, everything's working great. And I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, stay tuned for more on the Chevrolet. And uh, have a good one.